Amen. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. I do have one last song I'm going to be playing. that the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? Amen. God bless. It's good to see everyone this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's just give a hand clap, thanking God for just waking us up this morning. Amen. 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 He is worthy of all our praise. We thank him for the breath that we breathe. Amen. In the heart that's still beating, God is so worthy of our praise. And can you believe it? Another month has come and gone. We are in the month of October. 
So much to be grateful for. So much to be grateful for. Amen. Amen. I am not going to delay. I am going to give this, hand this over to um, Pastor John. He can open up our service. And so glad that you have um, joined us um, this morning. God bless. And it is first Sunday. <laughs> Amen. And thank you, Sister Jackie, uh, for introducing us this morning with the songs that you have prepared for our hearts and minds to hear. We do praise and thank God for uh, God touching each heart that we see here this morning, be with us. Amen. Uh, you're not here because of what and reason you might have thought of, but because God has unctioned you, fooled you to be here. You might not Amen. realize it, but you're here for hearing the word of God this morning. And Amen. so I always say, don't leave your sofa, your chair, your house without getting what God has for you. Amen. 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 A nugget of truth that you're going to need to take you through the rest of what is going to be another week Amen. of who knows what. Amen. So be prepared to grab a hold of Jesus and don't let him go. Remember, the Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk 2 and 20. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Amen. an endless song waiting to be sung with the voice of every tribe the sound of every tongue when the bride of christ on that day of days brings with joy unto the lamb a multitude of praise and like the roar of mighty seas and rolls of thunder, hear his people sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord Almighty reigns.
Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. I'm going to just do one more welcome to all those who have just come in during our song. Amen to our visitors, to our um, faithful. Amen to our YouTubers. God bless you. Welcome to Mount Moriah Community Church's virtual service, where the pastor is John P. Sheckett, Jr. I do hope you felt welcome. Amen. We already feel his presence and we're grateful for God always showing up at our services. Amen. Amen. So welcome once again. If you're a first timer, please let us know. Put your name in the chat box so we can give you a warm welcome um, later on during the service. Amen. I will be showing a short video. It's Repay with Peace, Not Revenge. Enjoy. You know, it would be nice if we lived in a world where no one ever did anything wrong to us, uh, but that is just not the world we live in. We live in a fallen world where we will be wronged by other people. And when that happens, our first reaction often is to think about how we can do something wrong back to them. There's some kind of sense of justice in our hearts that thinks, oh, well, I, I want to get them back. They can't get away with that. In Romans chapter 12, Paul knowing this, and he's talking to the church about, you know, what it means uh, that they know God, how they should live. Verse 17, he says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And let me tell you, it is much easier said than done not to repay evil for evil, you know. Um, and one of the reasons is because we have a thing in our hearts that likes to turn everything into some kind of competition. And competition is great when the goal of something is winning. If you're playing a basketball game, it's great to be competitive. If you are trying to have a loving relationship with somebody, it's terrible to be competitive. But we just have this in us. That, you know, you could just be driving and you're going on your merry way. Let someone like pass you and then you feel like, oh, I need to speed up. I don't need to let them by because something in us just doesn't want to lose. When it comes to relationships with other people, if we are mainly concerned with winning in, ex in exchange, making sure you can't wrong me without me wronging you, uh, then we're not going to be able to honor God. Instead, what he's telling us is, instead of pursuing a way to win, we should pursue peace. Peace doesn't just mean the absence of conflict. Peace means a kind of wholeness in the relationship. Peace is what Jesus died to give us, not only with God, but with each other. And so my encouragement to you right now is this, to think about what relationships you may have in your life where there's unnecessary conflict, where there are divides, where there are things that don't honor God and think, how can I show the goodness of Jesus and the grace of the gospel by pursuing peace with this person, by forgiving this person for whatever they've done, and instead of returning their evil with more evil, how can I do good? Uh, and, and pray that God will give you the grace and strength to be able to do that. Amen. Amen. Well said, well said, and perfect timing. Because again, it is Communion Sunday. And we want all of you, if you have a relationship with God, to participate in this precious time of remembering God's sacrifice. And so, as we often say, prepare your hearts to do so. That's between you and God. Prepare your hearts so you can um, partake in communion. Yes. And if you have anything against your brother or sister, Make it right. You can right now. Amen. So you can, as I said, partake in the Holy Communion. Amen. So yes, prepare to partake. <laughs> Amen. God bless. October, October, October. I can't believe, as I said earlier, this we're already in the month of October. This is the sixth day of October. Time is moving on. And we here at Mount Moriah want to just acknowledge and celebrate all our October babies, as we call you. Happy birthday to you. And I have a few names that I will be mentioning. Amen. Our October babies, babies, excuse me. We have our sister Lisa Parks. Her birthday was October 2nd. We have our dear sister Emma Smith. Her birthday is October 8th. Um, Brother Matthew, that's um, sister Lisa's son. Brother Matthew, his birthday is October 9th. 
we have uh, Sister Olise Brady. That's um, our Elder Gail's sister. I believe she's the oldest sister. Her birthday is uh, October the 11th. Uh, Quiana Moise, that's Sister um, Sister Gloria's daughter. Her birthday is the 15th of October. And last but not least, we have our Sky Jackson. Her birthday is October the 19th. And that is our um, sister Robin's daughter. So a round of applause to all our birthdays. If again, please forgive me if I have left out a name, but please put it in the chat box so we can again um, celebrate them as well. Amen. Thank you for listening to our birthdays. Bible study. Oh my goodness. I cannot talk enough about Bible study here at Mount Moriah Community Church. Amen. Join us as it says here, join our amazing weekly discussions and get spiritually fed. And our lesson right now is a rebuke from the Lord. Join us here every Wednesday via Zoom at 7 p.m., our Bible study. Amen. And I'm going to just off the, off, I hope I don't catch her off God, but Mother Parks, are you in the house? Yeah, I'm here. All right, Mother Parks, this was not planned, y'all. I'm just no, going to throw this I out. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Parks, can you just tell us what you love about Bible study? I love about Bible study because we learn something. It's, 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 we all should be here. I mean, let's face it. We're in a, a, a year of wanting to know more about God and his sacrifices and his love. I thank God for all of uh, I just thank God for being in Bible study. I, I wouldn't miss it for nothing. <laughs> But if you want to know about God, come to Bible study. Amen. Amen. There we are free and we can talk. What we, we think is stupid questions is not. No such thing. No such thing. No, no. We thank God. I thank God for just being in Bible study. Amen. I don't, Amen. Think, I've missed, I don't think I've missed too many of them, but I know God it is in the midst of it, and we'll get the right answers if we call, come in, and pull in our thoughts to each other. Amen. Thank you, Mother Park. Sorry to put you on the spot there. Yeah, you and did. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Parks is our oldest Bible study student. Amen. <laughs> 93 plus. Amen. So no excuse. All are welcome, no matter what age you are. Amen. We, Amen. There's always Amen. something to learn at, about ourselves, but even more so about God. Amen. Amen. So once again, you heard it from Mother Parks. Join us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here we go. Fasting and prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank God for Mount Moriah Community Church for being a prayer and fasting um, congregation. And again, we ask and encourage you to join us. Mm -hmm. This is our quarterly mm -hmm. prayer and fasting. It's coming up October 16th through the 18th. Amen. And if you want to learn more about it, you can definitely, it's found in the word, that's for sure. But contact our um, Elder Rhonda Sheckett. She'd be glad to share um, how prayer and fasting has been a blessing in her life, but it's also been a blessing to the congregation. So join us, join us, fasting and prayer. We need it. We're living in that time where we need prayer and fasting. So October 16th through the 18th, we will be shutting in in our own um, homes, um, lifting up names and lifting up God. Amen. Amen. And we thank him for um, the prayer and fasting here at Mount Moriah Community Church. Amen. Yes, we have fellowships here, our men fellowship and our women fellowship here, women of favor ministry. Um, Elder Gail 
Pickney is the president, and we will be meeting on the 22nd of October via Zoom for part three of Breaking Free from Stress. Oh, my goodness. Don't want to miss it. I can't say this enough. Come, come, women, women, come join, fellowship, encourage one another, lift one another up. We need it. We need it. Join us October 22nd via Zoom. As I said, all are welcome. All right. And our men of valor, so glad we have a men's fellowship here at Mount Moriah Community Church. And I'm going to say Elder Mel is in charge. Amen. God bless. And the topic will be, what does it mean to be a man? Join us again, October 27th. That's a Sunday via Zoom. And you will not be disappointed. Amen. See you there. Newcastle Baptist Church Ministries, where the pastor is Bishop Michael Gardenhire, will be celebrating next Sunday afternoon. That is the 13th of October, next Sunday afternoon, um, their 43rd missionary anniversary. The guest speaker is Pastor John P. Sheckett, Jr. Amen. So the church is invited to help celebrate um, our sister church and their missionary anniversary, and also be a blessing um, to the congregation and encourage the speaker. Amen. John P. Shekka, Jr. All information is found on the website. So um, stay tuned for more information. Tides and offerings. Yes, we worship through giving. Amen. We have three ways to give. That's through Zelle, Cash App, or you can um, mail your checks and money order and make them out to Mount Moriah Community Church. Amen. This information also is found on our website. So give. It is a blessing not only to um, the church here, but to others as we support different ministries here at Mount Moriah and our family members in need. So give unto the Lord. That is my prayer that you will do. Amen. As I said, more information is found on our website, and that's www.mtmoriahcc.com. Amen. 24-7. Amen. Join, find out what's going on here at Mount Moriah, and you won't be disappointed. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the announcements. <laughs> Right now, we're going to have our dear Elder Roy uh, with our scripture reading this morning. Good morning, Elder Roy. Well, good good morning. to see you. Well, thank you very much. And good morning to you and good morning to Mount Moriah. I'll be reading this morning from the Living Bible, and it will be from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verses 8 through 13. No one can hold back his spirit from departing. No one has the power to prevent his day of death. For there is no discharge from that obligation and the dark battle. Certainly a man's wickedness is not going to help him then. I have thought deeply about all that goes on here in the world where people have the power of injuring each other. I have seen wicked men bear it, and as their friends return from the cemetery, having forgotten all the deed or the dead man's evil deeds, these men were praised in the very city where they had committed their many crimes. How odd, because God does not punish sinners instantly. People feel it is safe to do wrong. But though a man sins a hundred times and still lives, I know very well that those who fear God will be better off. Unlike the wicked, who will not live long, good lives. Their days shall pass away as quickly as shadows because they don't fear God. 
Amen. 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 Bless God's word. Amen. Continually take root in our hearts. Thank you, Elder Roy, for the reading of God's word this morning. And we're going to ask our Elder Rhonda Sheckett um, to um, offer our morning prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me, First Lady? Yes, we can. Because I, I've been having a lot of trouble going in and out. Oh, Father God, we thank you for truly this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and yes, be glad Lord. in it. And oh, Father God, we present ourselves before you, Lord, in prayer. Because prayer changes things. We give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. Yes. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us. Lead us, Lord. Guide us and direct us in thy holy path. Oh, Father God, that we may glorify you in our walk in this side of life. Lord. Continue to bless the sermon this morning. Bless Pastor John. We thank you for touching you, his body. Continue to touch little Chloe's body in the yes, name God. of Jesus, yes, Lord. Oh, Father God, have your holy and perfect will and way with us. In yes. Jesus' name we Thank pray. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's go back home for a minute. Can you put your hands together? These are songs I grew up singing when I was in church as a kid. And we want to sing something this morning. You need to make some noise right there. If you know it, you can sing along. Songs are like this. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. So, Jesus, I'll never forget. Yeah. What you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. 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 Jesus, I'll never forget.
That song brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> a lot of memories. Sang that song in the church till we couldn't sing it no more. Just kept on singing. Just kept on ah. Of course, as you sing that song, you remember what God has brought you out from what he has done for you. And God has always been faithful. Let us pray. Precious Lord God Almighty, holy and true. We once again do praise and thank you, Lord God, for blessing our souls through song, preparing us, Lord God, to hear what thus saith the Lord. I do praise and thank you, Lord Jesus, for another opportunity to present your word to us all, Lord God. And dear Lord, my God, continue to help us as we hear your word. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be able to take that seed that you have given to us and plant it deep within our hearts. And we not just hear the word, but we become doers of your word. Continue to bless our soul as the service goes forward, Lord God that you can get all the glory out of what we ever do, that we can praise you like never before, because we want to live this life according to your word, Lord Jesus. You see how hard it is sometimes. Lord God, with you, all things are possible. So continue to bless our souls today. Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Uh, yes, Lord. Excuse me. I thought about for myself how much God has done for me in my life. And I know as you reflect and look back, you can say the same thing. How much God has done for you, how much he has delivered you from. Now, that's just what you know. There's so much more that he has done for you that you don't know. <clears throat> How he works behind the scenes in your behalf so you don't get destroyed, basically, and that you don't lose your soul. So we thank God for what is going to be the message today. Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. Because you see, Israel had a problem with that. They would forget. Time and time again, they would forget when they got just like us today. You know, we some people come to church because they're feeling bad. Body racked in misery and pain. They come to the first place they want to run to. It's, oh, God, come to church, have the people praying for them, even fasting for them. And they will come as long as they're in pain. Once that pain stops, they stop coming. And it's the same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. That's what Solomon said. People doing the same thing way back 
the Old Testament times, we're doing it today. Nothing new. But we want to understand that to stay close to God is always to remember so you don't fall into a trap or a trick or be beguiled by Satan when uh, things seem to go sideways. God is still there. He hasn't left you alone. If anyone is faithful, it's always God. We seem to slide away from being faithful from time to time uh, in our walk with God. But God is always faithful and will always be faithful. Amen. The scripture that I want to start out with this morning, uh, there will only be two scriptures. I know that's everyone is saying, Yahoo. Um, it comes from 1 Samuel. Excuse me again. 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 12, starting at verse 8. Now, this is not something that Israel hasn't been told about before. But you have to understand, at this point in Scripture, there have been many people that have come and gone. These aren't the same people that left Egypt. It's their uh, offspring. It's their, uh, uh, their children, their grandchildren. Uh, but it's been the same thing all along. God has, had told them early on that remind the people, remind your children, remind your family of what I've done for you in Egypt so that when uh, they go into the promised land, they won't forget what I've done for them. So always remind them, teach them. Now we know even today when you raise your child, since you know, about salvation since you've been changed. There's no guarantee that your child is going to take up the word that you're giving them. You can have two children in the same household. You'll tell both of them the same thing. One will take up on it. The other one will not. You can't understand why that is. Well, God is the one who calls us. And even from that same household, once again, Jesus said, you, th you think I came to send peace on earth? I didn't come to send peace. I said, I, said, I came to, to bring a sword. <clears throat> because the enemy will be in your own household, divided. And that's where, once again, prayer, yes, it does change things. But once again, it takes you not giving up on your child because God says, I need you to pray for that child. You don't know if they're going to change. Only I know. Only God is the one that touches the heart of a man to change. And, you know, and it doesn't matter how bad that person has been. That's the, that's the interesting part with God. It doesn't matter how bad that person has been. And if they repent, from their wickedness and ask God to forgive them of their sins, God said, I'm ready to forgive you. And, you, you know, the, the human mind starts to say, well, wait a minute, how is that, how is that fair? How is that fair? That person just needs to be sent down into hell and forgotten because of what they have done. Well, you have to understand God or understand something about God and his love. He loves his creation. You might not love his creation, but he sure does. And he doesn't want to see anybody perish. Those that have been harmed by the individual, we don't know where they went. We don't know if they deserved it or didn't deserve it. We don't know if God's grace and mercy, as he says in the word, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, prevailed in their life. Why was their life cut short? Well, you know, you, you read the scriptures and you find out where, once again, I remember uh, the uh, the priest in the uh, Old Testament, Eli. His sons um, 
were doing wrong, yet he had put them in position as being um, those that were supposed to be helping the people ministerially. And, and yet they, they were taking bribes and they were, you know, um, having orgies with women at, at the gate and so forth. And um, God, uh, through Samuel, came and told him, because you have not restrained your sons, there will not be an old man in your household from now on. No one is going to get old in your house because mm -hmm. of you not restraining your sons. So it's, it's and, and we don't understand, that's it. It's because of what we don't do. So don't, don't blame the thief or the robber or the murderer. It's a matter of blaming yourself. What brought this on you? In some cases, it could be nothing at all. God wants to bring you home. And a lot of other cases, it's because of you that God wants to take you out of this life. And unfortunately, the life that you're going to be leading now is no life at all. Separated from God in hell. But we're not to uh, try to analyze and figure things out as far as why God does this and what. God is a just God. That's the only thing we need to know is that God is a just God. So here we have in the book of 1 Samuel, who has, has become the uh, latest prophet in Israel, all right, um, anointed by God. And in chapter 12, starting at verse 8, he starts to explain once again to Israel what God has done for them. When Jacob was come into Egypt and your fathers cried unto the Lord, that's because they have cried out, they want a king. They want a physical king that they can look at uh, just like other nations. So Samuel is saying to them, this is what the king of kings has done for you. When Jacob was coming to Egypt and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot the Lord, their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us. You see, you see, when, you, when you're in pain, you want to be delivered from the pain. But when you're not in the pain, you continue doing all the wrong that, that you've been doing. And, you know, again, man doing whatever they want to do. And now they want deliverance. Okay. And they cried unto the Lord and said, we have sinned. All right. So they confessed because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtoreth. But now, but now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. And, and what will they do? And we will serve thee. Famous last words. We will serve thee. It's the same thing today when someone comes into the church looking for healing, looking for deliverance, looking for looking for answers, looking for answers. And God, in his grace and mercy, blesses you with whatever your petition is. And lo and behold, they do the skippity doo da, and out the door they go. And, God, and, here's, and here's Israel, they do the same thing. And the Lord sent Zerubbabel and Bedan and Jetha and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe, safely. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore, behold, the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If ye will fear the Lord, now this is even after they were disobedient and were asking for this king, 
But God said, even though you have rejected me, this is the love of God, even though you have rejected me, if you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. It is not wheat harvest today. I will call, listen, listen to this. I will call unto the Lord and he will send thunder and rain that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, that ye have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not, but we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And turn ye not aside, for then should ye go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Understand that. When someone has done you wrong, what does God ask you to do? Pray for them. What do, we, what do we hear that testimony by that young man? Not return evil for evil? We have to get this straight, church. It's God that repays. Because he says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, say of the Lord. You don't have to worry about whether or not this person gets his just due. That's not up to you. That's up to me. And so once again, Samuel is telling the people, I still have to pray for you even though I don't particularly care for what you've just done. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he have done for you. Jesus, I'll never forget. But if he shall do still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both you and your king. Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. God places before us today the reading of that scripture and trying to help us to understand that you need to stay focused on, not on problems or on a, a bad situation, but on the fact that what God can do, and God can do anything. You're in a fix, maybe not of your own doing, but once again, God is still your deliverer. You, you might be in a fix because of your own doing. God is still your deliverer. We have to remember that. Once again, just like Israel went back and forth, back and forth. He doesn't want you to go back and forth, back and forth. He wants you to be steady, steady in your fellowship, steady in your worship of who he is. That's the only way you're going to prosper in his way. Amen? It's not, it's not rocket science. We make it difficult for ourselves. We make our own life difficult for ourselves because of what we do or what we don't do. That sinful nature is a beast. If you don't keep it under the foot of the cross, you will always, always run into trouble somewhere along the line because of how you think because of your own personal ways. Because God said, your ways are not my ways. And that's why, once again, we have to understand God 
in his infinite grace and mercy always works on our behalf. When it takes long time for us to be delivered, it's because God wants to teach you a lesson. I'm not going to be delivering you soon as you ask me to deliver you time and time again. You're going to have to face something. You're going to have to face circumstances that are beyond your control for a certain period of time. Otherwise, you're like a spoiled child. You'll go back. Soon as I deliver you, you'll go back. Won't even be a week, maybe even a day before you start doing the same thing all over again. Then you're going to cry out when things go wrong and ask me to deliver you. I'm not doing that. I want you to be sure. I want you to be steady. I look back in my life and see how God planned it. I, you know, we don't know what our life is like when we're young. You don't know what you're going to be like when you're 50. You're a teenager, right? I don't know how about you, how many people know about life, all of what life entails, and you're a teenager. All you're thinking about is fun. All you're thinking about is where's the next party? You know, you're not thinking about the realities of life and that there is uh, something to pay for any situation that you do against somebody or mostly against God. You know, I, 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 I thank him. Praise God for how he kept me in his house, his house meaning church, as a little boy. My dad was an alcoholic, yet the church, through whatever means, I don't know, um, hired him to be the custodian. This is the church right across the street from where um, Elder Rhonda lives. That's where we grew up. But God blessed me. I would help. I would help my dad out. He didn't even have to ask me. I would go over there and I would uh, dust the pews in the sanctuary. I would sweep the basement um, from the dust that accumulated during the week. And God had me in his house. On Sunday evening, I would be in the church, in the uh, pastor's office, looking out the window, just, you know, looking at the cars go by, you know, it's Sunday night. I, next night is, the next day is Monday. That means school. Not knowing what God ha had lined up for me down the road. I'm sitting in the pastor's office looking out the window. And here I am down the road, X amount of years, and I am a pastor. I said, you know, God, I, <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing, you know, how you set things up. I say it's a setup. God sets you up. He doesn't set you up for failure. He sets you up uh, to prosper and, and to be a blessing to him. Now, I didn't know it at the time. I'm still, at that time, I was no more than 12 years old. But yet God was already, his plans were already in effect. I didn't know that. Even on, on Saturday when I was just in the pews and I said that prayer when I up at the altar, as I saw the preacher do it on Sunday, when it came time to pray, you know, there's a big stained glass window of Jesus carrying a lamb, sort of like what I have behind me. And uh, he'd be praying up there, you know, for deliverance for whomever, people. And I'm up there dusting pews, you know, for Saturday, you know, I'm dusting the pews, making sure things are clean for Sunday. And I, I'm looking around, there's nobody there but me, and I go and pray. Again, you know, this is a 12-year-old boy. What do I know about prayer? I don't know a, a thing about prayer. I just happened to see what the preacher did, and I know that there was trouble in the house. I know there was trouble in the house because my mother, between crying and 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 my dad not living right and I knew there was trouble. I didn't know uh, how to handle it, what to do, other than hearing my mother pray. And so there I was. So I said, well, let me pray. I prayed. And then I, after I prayed, I stepped back because, you know, this is a tall stained glass window, right? I stepped back thinking that Jesus is going to walk out of the stained glass window. Well, he didn't walk out the stained glass window. Again, you talk about a 12-year-old boy. Uh, and then I turned around and, you know, they had 
two rostrums, one where the preacher preached and the other rostrum was where they read the scripture from. I don't know what possessed me to do this. I walked over to it and they had a little platform that you stood up on. I stood up on the platform and I was looking over the pews. At the, <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I look at that, I look back and I said, you know, God, you know, you were setting me up. You were setting me up for the very thing that I'm doing now. And I didn't know it, didn't have a clue about where I was going to be when I turned 58 years old. But God knew. And his plan was uh, day by day coming into focus. I still was living a life where, once again, I was doing what was right in my own eyes. But God didn't let me go. In all my foolishness, how about you? You're a teenager. You're living a very foolish life. You're doing things that to please yourself. You're not really thinking about dying. You know, you're thinking about living and having a good time, even in going to church. Even in going to church. You, I, there was a time when I said to somebody who he might have asked me, um, uh, what was the question? Um, are you... Well, I can't remember the question, but I, the answer that I gave was, well, after you die, you live again. And, and the thing is, it's true, but I, I had no idea what that life was. I, you know, I'm thinking physical. I'd be coming back physical. I'm not, you know, and but when you grow up and finally find out what it's all about, it's a spiritual life that you have after you the body goes down. I said, wow, Lord, the stuff that you had me say, I had no clue, no understanding about it, but it was the truth. I said, man, Lord, that's why after all of what, I'll put it like this, after all of what I put God through, I'll put it like that, uh, of not living a life that was pleasing to God, because I wasn't, I was living for me. I don't know about you, but I was living for me. Uh, I said to somebody, I said, well, you know, I'm down here. It's, again, teenager, I'm down here and God's up in heaven. So in other words, as long as I'm down here, then, you know, I, I got to do what I got to do. No understanding as to what this spiritual life is all about. This walk with God is all about. Not even realizing that that's why you come to church to find out what this walk is all about. Bible study to get more connected to God so that you can live a life that's pleasing to him. I don't know why people stay away from Bible study. It's to help us out. It's not to condemn us. It's to help us see ourselves. And if there's anything that's askew, God says, straighten it out. Straighten it out because you don't know about tomorrow. And so once again, when I look back in my life, just like I'm asking you to look back from your life, look back, see what God has done for you. See what he's brought you out from. And that's like I said earlier, that's just what you know. There's so much more that he has saved you from that you don't know. Because Satan don't go to sleep. It's 24 seven. So God is 24 seven in our behalf. When you lay your head on your pillow at night, you don't know if you're gonna wake up the next morning. And as a testimony, I told y'all, there were on two occasions, two separate occasions, where I woke up and I felt that wicked spirit standing on the side of my bed, where I couldn't even talk. And I couldn't say the name Jesus. When God told me, say my name in your mind. And as soon as I started saying it in my mind, that spirit broke and I was fine. I sat up in the bed and I said, what in the world? See what God saves us from? Now he's, he, he allowed that to happen to me twice to let me know he's on the case for me. He's on the case for you. 
We have to learn to recognize God and his saving grace and his loving kindness and in his tender mercies. We need to, once again, don't give up on praising God or thanking him. Okay. Continue to remember what he has done for you. Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. It will keep you also from presumptuous sins. Doing stuff that you know is not right, but you're being pulled to do it anyhow. If you continue to, once again, think about what he's done for you, you will cast that away and say, no, 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 I, 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 I can't do I can't do that. One last scripture I want to read to you. It comes from the book of Psalms. Psalms 89. Just one verse. I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. That's you reminding your family, reminding your friends. I'm talking about friends that go to church that might need to be helped remembering what God has helped them through. Uh, whether it be through passing that examination for that job. Remember when God opened up your understanding so you could pass that test? You remember the move that God made in your behalf where you got that job? You prayed? I remember praying for a job that God blessed me with. I sure do. Bless me with exactly what I prayed for. Talk about Jesus, I'll never forget. And now that I'm in the prime of my life, notice I said prime, not going down. I'm in the prime of my life. I look back and just in amazement say, Lord, I know I don't know about tomorrow. But Jesus, what you have taken me through, I still have two arms, two hands. I still have two legs. I can still walk. I can still talk. The stuff I put you through, you could have cut me off at any time in my sin. You'd have caused me to lose an arm, a leg, lose my mind. But you had mercy on me. Has he had any mercy on you? I know he has. Talk to him. Remind them of his great grace and mercy in your life. Let us pray. Precious Lord God, almighty, holy, and true. Sometimes, Lord Jesus, we need to be reminded of how wonderful you are. How wonderful you have been to us, Lord God. How you continue to make ways for us out of nowhere. Sometimes we look at what's in the bank and the bills on the table. We say, Lord, I don't know how we're going to take care of this, but I know that you're my way maker. You've done it for me before. I know you can do it again. Jesus knows how to pull things from the sky and make a way for you. All we need to do is remind him of his goodness, remind him of his grace, remind him of his mercy, his love, that he has shown to you as an individual, to you. I know he's blessed your family, but you need to talk about you. Just one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Talk about how wonderful he's been to you. So we thank and praise you, Lord God, for your word today. Help us not to forget, Lord Jesus, how good you have been to us. In Jesus' precious and most holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John, for your message today. And praise God for another opportunity to share in our communion. I was thinking about your message and Jesus, I'll never forget, but another way of Maybe saying the same thing might be 
Jesus, I will always remember. And Jesus, with our communion today, he asked us to do this in remembrance of me. So praise God for that. Sister Jack, if you have a selection, you may at this time. can't hear it. Praise God, praise God. There is power in the blood of Jesus. I can't believe that this is already the 10th month and we only have 10, two more months to go before this year ends. At this time, I'm going to ask our elder Mel if he would bless the sacraments for today. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace. The Father God, Lord, we just thank you for your message this morning and for your messenger, Father God. Your word this morning reminds us to remember why you came and why you died for us. And that is for us to know the truth that's in your word and to receive understanding through your Holy Spirit. So we will never forget what you have done for us. And now, Lord, we thank you for being in our service and being in our midst once again. 
Your word says that when two or three of us are gathered in your name, you would be in our presence. And this morning, Lord, once again, Mount Moriah is gathered in the multitude to continue praising and communing with you. Now, Lord, as we move into our communion service, we come before your throne of grace asking you to bless our communion elements. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit and the anointing will transform and bless the juice, which represents your blood that was shed on the cross for our sins, and to bless the bread which represents your body that was bruised and broken, so we may have the free gift of everlasting life. Lord, we thank you for these blessings as we continue developing our personal relationship with you. We thank you this morning, Lord. We praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. This morning I'll read our communion scripture. It will come from the King James Version. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, verses 23 through 34. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, I took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Verses 24 and 25 again. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat. In verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he is up, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Praise the Lord and Thank each of you for participating with us this morning. May the Lord bless and keep you. We will offer up our benediction for today. And again, Brother John, we thank you for your message and for feeding us the word of God today. Hallelujah. 
Our benediction will be taken from Jude chapter 1, verses 24 and 25 this morning. And now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Peace. Peace like a river. Only the peace that God gives us is true peace. Amen. We thank you for joining us once again for our um, Sunday worship service here at Mount Moriah Community Church. Have a blessed week. If you're unable to join us, um, amen. Don't forget to read his word. And this applies to those who are able to join us in our fellowship for salvation, prayer, and testimonies briefly after service. Amen. We love you. And we're just so grateful for your joining us once again here um, for our service. Again, I'm going to un unmute yourself. You can stop sharing so everyone can just greet one another in the love of God. Amen. Thank you once again for coming. God bless you.